everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to my channel. We are back, y'all. Love after lockup. Lord have mercy. Oh. Season 2, this is episode 19, Trials and Tribulations. This episode was a hot ass mess. Hot ass damn mess. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Okay, y'all? Let's get right into the bullshit. Y'all, okay. We're going to get Andrew and Lamar ass on up out the way. So, this nigga was stayed out. Well, he stayed. <laughs> that was so ratchet. This nigga stayed out the whole night. He's the next morning. He done came back after went and hanging on the block with the homies and shit. After he done put the, t uh, the what was that? The, the Christmas tree up. Christmas tree up. You know, Christmas time in the LBC. So he was over there putting the tree up. So like I said, it's the next day afterwards, right? So he come walking through the door with his little gas station flowers that he wants to give to Andrea. She like, uh-uh, nigga. Wherever you done came from, go ahead and take your ass back. He was gone the whole night. Why would, first of all, where the fuck was you at the whole goddamn night and your goddamn ass couldn't, you couldn't call, you couldn't text a, a nothing, a, let her know that she was all right. She said she was worth the whole goddamn night. This nigga was in jail. So why are you gone all goddamn night? That's what I need to goddamn know. That would have been my goddamn question. That's just me though, move right along. And in a way... I mean, I get it. He was locked up 10 years. He wants to just have some time to have with his friends, to get out there and, and, and to finally be free. And I get that. I get that. But at the same time, like, she trying to let this nigga realize and know you trying to go back and hang with the same niggas that got your ass locked up the first and the second time. I'm trying to help forgive me for trying to keep your ass out of goddamn jail. That's all I'm going to say about that. It was cute. He made a little mistletoe or whatever. He said he found some um, little pieces that fell off the Christmas tree and he put them together and made a little mistletoe whatever out of it it was a hot goddamn mess but that was cute that's that's all he can do he been locked up for 10 years I mean shit what you want the nigga to do go to Hobby Lobby and make some shit he don't know how to do all of that he don't know what the fuck a Hobby Lobby is but he made it for you and that was cute move right along from them y'all Scott and Lizzie Lizzie was pissing me off in this episode. I feel like she was deliberately trying to self-sabotage her relationship with Scott. She was complaining the whole goddamn time. First she goes and she picks him up, right? She wants to take him to the beach. Now remember the heifer says she was going to take him out on a date and she was going to pay for everything. This bitch going to take him out on a date on the beach on a picnic where she probably made the sandwiches. But hey, she paid for everything. She bought the lettuce. She bought the tomatoes. She bought the bread. She bought the meat. Bitch, she paid for it. She did what the fuck she said she was going to goddamn do. So first she gets over there and he got on like a button down, some slacks. And so she like, uh-uh, but we going to the beach. I got a bikini. Though she said it just like that. I damn near fell the fuck out when she said it like that. So... She like, nah, nigga, you ain't going to the house. She changed because you can't wear all of this. We finna go to the goddamn beach, right? So they go in the house. She's sitting down. He comes out, like, I guess to, you know, try to lighten the mood or whatever. Bucket naked with his baby picture over his penis. Scott, no, no, no. Scott, Scotty boy, go back in there. Put your goddamn clothes on and let's fucking go. That was nasty. Didn't nobody need to see your kibbles and bits like that. That was that was real nasty. Nobody wanted to fucking see that. So Scott pulled out the big guns for this goddamn uh, date. He went and got out his drop top Camaro on that goddamn ass. He like, bitch, you didn't see me rolling. Y'all had him fucked up. He was ready. He was ready to stunt on them hoes in his goddamn Camaro. And that's what he did. Him and Lizzie is riding to the breach. And, um... They holding hands, and Lizzie trying to flirt with him and shit. I see what she was doing. I can't. Mm -hmm, I see you, Lizzie. So she was like, okay, so I got a question. Who is this bitch Charlene, and why is she over there at your house opening the door like she's so motherfucking comfortable? It, does she live there? So he tells her that she had no place to go, so she's living there with him. Now, Scott. Scott. Now, but then again, Lizzie, y'all wouldn't even together. Y'all left on bad terms. He left your ass, threw your ring and your phone in the guard, I mean in the um in the in the toilet and left. And y'all have been broken up since then. So he was not in any way obligated to let you know that he had another female standing over there with him. But when you popped up over at the house, yes, he could have told you then, like, look, hey, 
this the business was going on you know what i'm saying i got this other little chocolate drop right here that i'm trying to bag so this is what's popping but she ain't let her know that but anyway like i said at the same time lizzie you was already you was ready to go at him for any goddamn reason it didn't matter what the hell the situation was you was ready to go at his ass for that but they on the beach they're having their little picnic and as they're having their picnic he pulls out this black box that he wants to give to her and then their episode or their little you know situation or whatever kind of you know goes to commercial from there now scott i got a feeling it's the ring that he gave her anyway he probably went back in that goddamn hotel and he probably dug in that goddamn toilet and got that ring back out of there that's what i got a feeling that it is but at the same time lizzie look here bitch look i know you love scott scott i know you love lizzie but you two motherfuckers got problems y'all don't need to be together y'all don't need to be married y'all need to figure out who you are before you can come together and be two. Move right along from there. Clinton Tracy, y'all. So, it's after um, they've already left the mama's house. You know, they had brunch when it was an hour and a half late. Daddy had to go back to work. Clinton's on his way to drop off Tracy at her parole officers so that she can sign her papers and finally get off parole after 10 years, right? He's going to go to his dad's workplace, of, again, where he works as well, because he's going to pick up his paycheck. They're going to meet up at the airport, and then they're going to go to Vegas to celebrate. Now... <laughs> Scott is, you know, he's 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 nervous, but he's excited because, you know, he's happy that she's getting off parole, but he's afraid that, you know, if she couldn't stay off of trouble when she was on parole, how the fuck is she gonna stay out of trouble now that she's off parole, right? So he goes and he picks up his check from his job. He sits down and he talks with his dad. He tells his dad that, you know, dad, I need to ask you for some advice. You know, you and mom been together for a long time. And I just want to know how the both of y'all did it. How did y'all last this long? And then he's like, look here, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just got to be honest with one another. You got to trust one another and you just got to make it work. So Clint tells his dad that he's got a secret. He's been hiding from Tracy and he doesn't know how to tell her. This motherfucker says a bitch named Stephanie has been hitting him up in his DMs and they've been talking. How long they've been talking, he didn't say. But it's been serious enough, obviously, to where he's been hiding it from Tracy and they're in some sort of relationship. He claims he ain't never met up with the woman, but I don't believe that for one goddamn second. And um, we can see on the next episode, Tracy ends up finding out that he's been sexing this nigga. I mean, no, this nigga been sexing this female. So y'all been doing something. But it, girl... I'm getting goddamn ahead of myself. Daddy tells him, look, you need to cut this bitch off, whoever the hell she is. If you really want this to work with Tracy, then you need to cut this shit off. Now, mind you, Clint been married a couple times. He met Tracy in prison. Ain't no telling what else he been doing on the goddamn side. So, Clint, Clint got problems. You don't need to bring no other bitch into the situation. And if you think about it, you see how Tracy look, what Tracy's situation is. Just imagine what this other bitch got going on. So later that night, right, he meets up with Tracy at the airport. You know, she gets her freedom papers. She happy. She's showing them to him. Babe, I got, I got my papers. I'm a free woman now. <laughs> She's off parole. They ready to go to Vegas. They toast and they get ready to go to the airport. And they finna go and live their best fucking life in, in Vegas. But oh, I'm ready for this next goddamn episode when that comes on. Because it's going to be some shit shit that goes down. Tracy finds out the real bullshit that goes on with them. And I'm excited. And I'm here for it. Moving on from that goddamn dumbass. Ooh, y'all. This, y'all, I'm tired of these reality shows getting me in my feelings. Brittany and Marcelino. It's the morning after them getting into the argument that they had gotten in when Brittany had went out and had drinks with Sasha. It's the morning of Sasha's hearing, right? And so, you know how you get into it with your man or your girl or whatever. And so, y'all mad, but you're not really mad or whatever. But you just, you, you don't want to start no more shit that y'all already got going on. So, you speaking, but it's a dry ass speak that y'all do to each other, right? So, that's what they're doing to one another. Marcelino don't want no goddamn problems. He see Brittany is already in her feelings because she's worried about Sasha. So, he apologizes for what, you know, he said and how he was acting the night before. And so she's like, I just really want you to realize that it's a lot going on. Like, 
you have to realize that's my best friend. What she feels, I'm feeling, I, I already know everything that she's feeling, what she's going to go through right now. And this is a big deal for her, and I want to be there for her. And so this episode, I was I was all team Marcelino. I was proud of you, Marcelino. He put his differences aside. He put his feelings aside. He said, you know what, regardless of what, I'm going to be there to support Brittany in whatever she needs while she's there supporting Sasha through whatever she needs. And Marcelino, you got nothing but points for me on that. I was riding with you, Marcelino. So goddamn proud of you. So, mm, mm, it hurt me to my heart. Sasha goes up, she speaks to the judge, and she's like, Judge, I just want you to know, since I've been out, I've been doing the best that I can to prove to you that I can be a good person and to make you proud, and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Judge tells her, look, Regardless of what you're telling me right now, had you not played a role in what happened, two people wouldn't have died. You were not the person that pulled the trigger, but you were definitely involved in this. And regardless of what you say, your last testimony, you did everything you could to revert the attention off of you and to put it on everybody else and to give yourself as little responsibility to do with this as you did. So I'm going to go with the state's recommendation. He says... Oh, uh, what did he say? First, he says 72 months. Then he says, I'm going to grant the counts five, six, seven. He was throwing out all these motherfucking numbers, right? Then he says, uh, whew, he's going to grant her 1,000, I'm sorry, 1,499 days that she's already served. But he's given her the state's recommendation of 432 months. Bitch, that's 36 years. But if you take off those 1,499 days, that's 32 years. I thought she was going anywhere between 10 to 30 years. Bitch, he gave her 32 years. She's eligible for parole in 2025. By then, she'll be 32 if she gets parole by then, I, I doubt it because we already know how the system is. The system ain't necessarily set, the system ain't set up to help you. The system is set to tear you down and to keep you down. And oh, my heart goes out to Sasha, y'all. Free Sasha. Whatever they selling free Sasha shirts, let me know. I got you can get. I give you my cash app. Give me your cash app. I send the shit to you. Free Sasha, y'all. Free Sasha. All right, y'all. The fuck shit of the fuck shit. Megan and Michael, we gonna start with their goddamn ass, right? So it's picking up where they left off in the last episode where Megan is telling Michael that she kissed his homeboy Rock, right? So he's calling up his homeboy and it's like, so he, I'm, I'm expecting he gonna say the same goddamn thing. So he called up his homeboy, his homeboy like, yeah, what's going on? He was like, uh, nothing, just finding out about you and Megan. Yeah, my nigga, I mean... I was going to call you and tell you about that. Nigga, you want to call him and tell him nothing. So Michael asked him, so what, did y'all did y'all mess around? Did y'all fuck around? He's like, nah. Did y'all kiss? Nah. Nigga, why did you lie? Why lie? <sighs> Megan is even like, wait a minute. Let's just be real. Let's just be honest about it. I done already told him what happened. Like, why lie about it now? So now... Instead of Michael, yes, Michael is mad at his homeboy, but he's like, you on some snake shit. He got the nerve to call Megan a snake and say what she did was some snake shit. Like, you fucking around and having a whole nother baby with your wife that she knew nothing about was some snake shit. Like, her asking you, was there any other females like two, three episodes ago, and you snuck your way up out of answering that was no snake shit. Yeah, what she did was some foul ass shit. She shouldn't have kissed your homeboy. But at the same time, nigga, snake, snake slither together. They together. So it take a snake ass nigga to know a snake ass nigga to see a snake ass nigga when they doing some snake ass shit. So for you to get pissed off at her for pulling a you on you, nigga, that's what karma does. That... So now that all that has happened, he has had time to realize what's really important to him. 
his child and his child that is on the way and Sarah so what does he do he tells Megan you can go on go on about yourself you can go on go on about your business so he mad he tells Megan's chunks the deuce tells Megan to goddamn leave right so he then tries to call Sarah steady blowing Sarah phone up ain't called her ain't been bothered with her side besides that one time that he talked with her after he was hanging with Megan for the whole goddamn day and she hung up on his ass he ain't contacted her since then but now he knows that she's getting induced which I'm sure the producers or somebody probably fucking told him because he ain't been calling keeping up with her goddamn ass and so now he's worried about her now he realizing that she's the most important thing to him and he's trying to get there to her to be there with her while she's giving birth to her because he wasn't there for the first child for the first child the birth of his first child he wasn't there and so he's fucked up about that and so now he realizes he may not be there for the birth of his second child he pissed off he's super mad now he's out there in the fucking blizzard trying to shovel ice off the goddamn car with a with cigarette in his goddamn hand and he mad he finna saddle up and ride on out to new york so he can be there for sarah his mama come outside it's like nigga look you done put me through so much shit since you were 16 years old being in and out of jail and now you go you on tether nigga you got a, a whole thing on your foot and you don't give a damn about it. You trying to risk your whole freedom because now all of a sudden you realize what should have been something that you should have known from the whole time that was important to you. Now you realize it's important to you and you ready to saddle up and you ready to ride out and go see on that. Mama like, uh-uh. If you leave, don't bring your goddamn ass back over here because I'm not finna deal with this bullshit. Now I'm finna go in this house because it's cold in the motherfucker out here and this little ass rock wear jacket ain't working for me. And if you leave, just know, don't bring your fucking ass back over here. What this nigga do? With his with cigarette, he's sitting up there shoveling the, sho the snow off the goddamn car. Gets in the goddamn car. It's like, fuck this, I'm a grown ass man. I'm tired of people telling me what to do. I'm finna get in the car and I'm finna go see my baby being born. Yo, he hops in the car and leaves, y'all. He hops in the car and he leaves. On Tether. Not giving a fuck. Now, he says that he was waiting to hear from his parole officer if he could get a pass to leave and go and see his baby being born. Now... Before he leaves, he does get in contact with Megan. And Megan is like, nigga, you check in with your parole officer all the time. Why would you wait for the day of to, to decide now that you want to come out and see the baby being born? Like, she's over the shit. She's like, look, what you also don't realize is beside from this situation right now is when I leave from the hospital, I'm going to be leaving going home to two kids by myself. Like, I feel fucked up for Megan. That's wrong. You put her through that bullshit. And now all of a sudden, because Megan has violated you, you now worried about Sarah and Sarah's feelings. And now all of a sudden you realize what's most important to you. Y'all, I, I was so goddamn done. I was like, nigga, if you d d go, go, go away, go away. So Megan is back home in Fort Worth. She's talking with her homeboy, B. That's her bestie. And, you know, she's telling B about how her and Michael got into it. She told Michael about um, her and Rock, had, uh, make, you know, kissing and how um, <clears throat> Rock lied and said that they didn't kiss. And so B is like, okay, so w w what is your end game in all this? Like, you know the nigga's married. You know he had a whole baby on you. And... Now he's mad, and now he's not answering none of your phone calls now that you you left from there. Like, why do you even care at this point? Megan is like, look, I'm in love. He was my first. He was my first real relationship, and I love him, and I don't want to let him go. And Megan, it's like, girl, girl, no, no. No, no. Y'all, I'm ready for this next episode because this is going to be juicy as hell. Clint is finally going to reveal his secret to Tracy. Um, I believe um, Sarah's going to be done had the baby by then. Um, it's, it's, it's
it's just gonna be juicy. I'm ready to see the next episode. And that was the end of my review for Life After Lockup. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about it. I thought this episode was good. Was it watch worthy? Yes, go ahead and watch it. But if you don't want to, that's good. Cause baby, I summed it up for you in what, 22 minutes or less. <laughs> let me know what y'all think about this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Happy Saturday, everybody. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.